Look at that. Okay, can I sit here and I'll, I'm going to, because I think we're the computer person, the computer person's done. I'm going to sit here and just show you some of these. So there's all kinds of visuals. We've been using visuals since the beginning of time almost, the hieroglyphics. Um, everyone learns from visuals, and I wanted to show you this. So we might be thinking, well, visuals are just kind of like for those who can't read or something. I was at this conference, mostly all with doctors, and at the breakfast buffet, I was meeting with this doctor of pediatric neurology. And I said, oh, and I believe a lot in pictures. She said, so do I. She drew this. This is actually on the napkin at the place where we had breakfast. You can see the background? It's on the napkin. She drew this picture. And this is on pediatric neurodevelopment. A two months smiling head control, four months reaching, rolling over, six months, see, going down the spinal column, neurodevelopment. She teaches this at medical school. This is what she, you know, not on a napkin, she draws it out or do something. Doctors come back to her years later and say, you're the one who drew the picture. <laughs> Medical students. Pictures can, everyone can learn from pictures. I had to take neurology. I would have done a whole lot better with that one. And now that we have the new grandbaby, I showed my daughter-in-law this picture. She has a much clearer sense of what to expect in the baby's development over the first year. So everyone can learn from pictures. This is another example. This was from a diabetes guide. It's an excellent one uh, from put out by the American College of Physicians. It's really written in a very, very clear way. What I especially liked, what I wanted to show you that, is it's real food and real pictures. I mean, and real people. You know, there's usually like the drawings or something. And actually, they have little quotes, little anecdotes. Those are, those are like a mini version of a story in there. With the bottom one, the guy is saying, when I go for seconds, I go for the vegetables. They really fill me up. So isn't that some version of a story that's in there? So there's photographs, too. They didn't have much money to produce that, so they just took real food and took the camera and did it. Let's see what else we have here for examples. This one is from a cookbook for children called Pretend Soup and Other Real Recipes. So it's just line drawing. So this is a professionally produced book, but it was how, I don't know, do you have French toast? It's bread with egg in it. But just showing children who, can, who are just learning to read how to make French toast so that the child can be the main cook with the adult helper in there. This one is from Peter Houts. It's pictographs, which he uses very much and has written a lot of papers and done a lot of research on this in healthcare. So he does simple stick figures there. And he actually was, did a survey of, at least for a while, HIV AIDS medication was very complicated. I don't know if it is still. For a while, it was a lot of different medications all day long. And he did this study with people who read at about a second grade level. And did a series of about 50 different drawings. And they were color coded. And I forget the whole code, but they taught it to people, including red, yellow, and green. Red, like you need to do something right away if this happens. Yellow, you know, you can wait till the morning. And green, whatever, call next week or something. Um, and I don't remember what the blue was. But simple line drawing to convey this. They looked at the recall rate of what this message meant a month later. It was extraordinarily high. So there are articles in the back of your handout by Peter Houts. You can find the research. Now this is a stick figure, because I want to teach you how to draw. Who here likes to draw? Ooh, good, I can make you all unhappy. I'm going to teach you how to draw. Okay, you ever draw stick figures when you were little? Okay. 
So in your handout, okay, go to page nine. In one box, draw a square. In the next box, draw a circle. We don't have, you know, we're not doing that hard yet. In the next block, draw a triangle. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want. <laughs> you like to get an A, don't you? <laughs> and next block, draw a squiggly line. What is it? Squiggly line. You know that word? Squiggly line. Do, 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 do. Anything. Scribble. What is it? A net? Oh, is that? Just whatever. Did everybody do all that? Yes. You passed. You can all draw. <laughs> Yay! You have all the skills you need to draw. Yeah, you can do it so this is one way of doing a stick figure. I actually, we knew this when we were kids, right? But I actually, because I know people like numbers and want to do everything just right. So I just want to show you, if you were to draw stick figures, you can begin with a square. See, this is a square up here. A square, all the numbers are the same size, so it's one to one. See what it is? Am I explaining that well? So you can do that as the top part of the torso. The hip part is about half, it's the same width, but it's about half the height. For your arms, it's about the same length as each side of the square, with a little silly hand on it. Your head is about the same height, too, and your legs are about one and a half and one and a half. So that's, if you wanted proportions, if you think, I can't draw a stick figure because I get the proportions all wrong, that's just a little way to remember how to do that. We'll get back to that one in a minute. The next one, might be my last illustration, is a salt shaker figure. I learned this, I took a webinar it was a wonderful webinar by Mike Artell. He actually, some of you as excellent speakers might like it, he actually draws pictures in the middle of his own talks. I was so impressed by it. He even did this on a webinar. Now he draws these figures that he refers to as a salt shaker figure that has even less to do with. So does this kind of look like a salt shaker, more or less, using your imagination there? And then very simple arms. The hands can be almost like a mitten. You don't even have to have all the fingers on there. And the legs are very simple. A little head, and you can differentiate between male and female just with the <laughs> hair, perhaps. And put it into context. I mean, what I might draw for a figure would be dressed the way we dress in the U.S., you might dress it a little differently, do hair a little differently. You can adapt it. This takes but moments to do. Um, 